The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, it's Renee Bangalstor, CEO of Charlie Bravo Aviation, here to talk to you about how to save six figures on your next airplane. I'll go over a few basic housekeeping items as we start the webinar today. First, you should be able to view the panel on the side that has a question block or chat box. If you have a question, please type it in here as you think of it, and I'll get to as many of these as I can at the end of the webinar. Secondly, if you stay till the end of the webinar, I'll be giving you a list of five resources the best brokers in the world use in aircraft acquisitions. So let's get to this. I always like to start my presentations with quotes from famous people, and today is no exception. Colin Powell once said, great leaders almost always are great simplifiers who can cut through argument, debate, and doubt to offer a solution everyone can understand. I am not claiming to be a great by any stretch of the imagination, but I can give you some solutions you'll understand. I'm gonna do that in the form of telling you how I've saved my clients millions of dollars, sometimes in a single transaction, and how you can use some of those same secrets for yourself. Many of them apply no matter what size aircraft or transaction you're talking about. Trying this again so you can see my screen. So who is this webinar for? This is for people who are not professional aircraft buyers. It's for people who don't have time to deal with mistakes, either their own or those of their team. It's for people who don't want to make a costly mistake by missing a step buying an airplane. At your age, which I assume is older than this young man, I guarantee you don't want an airplane like this. This webinar is for people who want to maximize their budget and not just spend money like it grows on trees. So what we found here at Charlie Bravo over the years is we've helped hundreds of clients. The ones who end up with the best deals are the ones who ask questions, those most eager to learn, not the ones who know the most to begin with. So here's what's possible if you ask the right questions. You can anticipate the pitfalls ahead of time. You have confidence to put a team together you feel really has your best interest at heart. And by knowing what you're doing, you can save a ton of money. One particularly smooth transaction that we completed last year, I'll use as an example, is a Falcon 900 acquisition. I know this is a large plane, and some of you may be buying small planes, but the same principles apply. We looked at this family's business and their personal travel. They're a grown family, and they're expanding their business to Europe, so they needed a longer range plane. We made sure their local management company had expertise in Falcon maintenance. We were able to advise them that the market conditions were prime for purchase of a large aircraft. It was the summer of 2016, and during that time, the large jet market was very depressed, even more so than it is now. We found the seller in another part of the world with a weaker currency. We made sure that they had advanced tax planning, so they weren't paying more taxes than they needed to. We worked with their attorney on their 1031 exchange, plus the way that they were going to set everything up going forward with the new aircraft. Because of our market research, we bought the plane for them approximately $3 million below, quote, market value. It helped that we knew what market value was. We have a research staff dedicated to knowing those things, but there are some ways you can look for those values yourself. We managed the deal in such a way that the importation was not a headache. We worked with the management company and the FAA during the pre-purchase inspection to ensure we were going to be able to import it easily. That being said, I'd like to introduce you to my company. Charlie Bravo Aviation is an aircraft broker and dealer based in Austin, Texas. We do transactions all over the world. 
We've done hundreds of transactions over the years involving clients in 40 plus countries. We have experience in all types of aircraft from helicopters to turboprops and large jets. I won't say that we're the most experienced brokers in the entire world because there are guys still doing this who were selling airplanes when the first business jets were introduced in the 60s. But I will say we have a young, innovative outlook. We are progressive with the way that we do things, and we've come up with great results for our clients. Most importantly, we maintain an extensive network of professionals around the world. Other brokers, service centers, operators, attorneys, banks, etc. And here's a little bit about who I am. As I mentioned when I started the webinar, I'm the co-founder and CEO of Charlie Bravo Aviation. I'm also the vice president for business aviation for the International Aviation Women's Association. I maintain an active role in NBAA, the National Air Transportation Association's President's Council, Women President's Organization, the National Aircraft Finance Association, etc. I got involved in aviation by marriage. My husband's father was a pilot for Nationwide Insurance most of his career, and I have come to really love this industry, the business of it, and what private aviation can do for businesses and influencers. But honestly, my first love is journalism. I went to school to be a journalist. I love stories. I love quotes, as I told you at the beginning of this webinar, and I love to write. In fact, last year, I combined my love of business and journalism and wrote a book called Crushing Mediocrity, based on some lessons from my life and some amazing people I've met along the way. One of my friends who's a podcaster interviewed me after I wrote the book, and he said, so what are you doing to crush mediocrity, Renee? What's the, that one big area where you're putting your money where your mouth is? I had some ideas already, but I accepted that challenge. I said, you know what? I'm going to create a way that more people can buy private airplanes without getting fleeced, without losing money inadvertently, especially for the people buying smaller planes or just getting started in private aviation. So here we are on this webinar today because I accepted that challenge. So let's get into the meat of the presentation. Today's topics for saving thousands, even millions of dollars on private aviation has three main areas of concentration. And there are a bunch of tips under each one of these topics. The first one is choosing the right plane. The second one is building the right team. And the third one is developing the right plan. We're going to go over all three of those today. I promise in this webinar, I am going to give you as many tips as I can in this limited amount of time. I will answer questions at the end. So again, if you would like to type those in the sidebar at the right, I'll look at all of them as they're coming in, and then I'll answer those at the end of the webinar. And then I'm going to give you an opportunity at the end of the webinar to get more in-depth help with our brand new Clear Skies program. VFR is much easier than cloudy skies, right? There are a couple of recurrent problems that I see, and these are the reasons I put together this webinar. And that's that you either know the benefits of owning and operating a private plane, how much it can help you grow your business or expand your sphere of influence, but you could overspend if you don't know what you're doing. And I've seen that happen a lot. Or you're already wasting time on commercial aviation and you just don't have any more time to waste trying to get up to speed on what's available from a private aviation standpoint. You've looked for but haven't been able to find a single access point, a one-stop resource for knowing what you're doing, and that's what we're working on here today. There are a couple of different scenarios that we see from a research perspective when people are buying a plane. One thing that people do is have a pilot or a friend help them. The next thing people may do is assign a project to a CFO, an attorney, or a special projects manager in their business. And the third thing we typically see people do is conduct all the research themselves. This can become incredibly tedious. The downfalls can be that your pilot does not necessarily know the markets or the sales process. He knows a lot about planes, and he may make a great decision for you on a plane, but he's not going to know some of the pitfalls that can come along with an aircraft purchase. 
some of the legal ramifications, the tax scenarios, and really what might be a better aircraft for you. Your CFO or attorney or special project manager may know how to manage transactions very well, but may not know a lot about planes. When you're doing your own research, you may fail to consider some minor detail like the runway limitations of your favorite destination in hot and high conditions. Additionally, you may or may not want to pay a broker who can help you, or you may hire the wrong one and end up in even more trouble. It is possible to have someone guide you through all of the necessary steps, but isn't it better to make sure you know all the steps? I've been doing this for 15 years, and there's still a number of experts I call on for advice. Tax codes change, laws change, international transactions have complications. There are no hard and fast templates for an aircraft transaction, but there are steps you need to follow to make sure all the questions were anticipated. For instance, I'm working on a deal right now where the buyer's advisor, and I use the term advisor loosely, didn't have the right connections to get a best case avionics upgrade quote. The deal almost fell apart over that. He didn't know what the international registry was or if the buyer's bank would require it. And he didn't know that he needed to address the sales or use tax issue before closing. Even though I represent the seller, I've been educating the buyer and his advisor along the way. You have to know the right questions and that's where we're going. In choosing the right plane, here are some of the areas where I see people making mistakes that can end up costing them a lot of money. The first is you need to choose the right aircraft for your mission. Markets have changed significantly. So where you used to spend $2 million on only a light jet and an older one at that, now you can buy any size aircraft for $2 million. So you need to make sure you're buying the right plane for where you're flying who you're flying, when you're flying, and why you're flying. There are a lot of choices out there. Just last week, I was speaking in a speaking engagement in South Florida, and afterwards, I was chatting with a broker there. I asked him what he was looking for, like I usually do, and he told me he was looking for a Falcon 50 he could put on a charter certificate. I asked him why. He said, well, I need something with a really comfortable cabin that's just a good workhorse getting people places. I said, well, there aren't really a lot of Falcon 50s in that price range anymore that don't need a lot of work. But have you considered a Citation 3 or 6 or 7? Those aircraft weren't even on his radar. There are a number of choices that can accomplish the same mission. There are a number of choices within every budget. And you need to take all of those choices into consideration, along with those airplanes operating budgets. You also need to think about depreciation. Yes, you can get bonus depreciation in the United States on a new plane right now, but the values of those aircraft are falling very rapidly post-sale. So you probably want to take both aspects of depreciation into consideration. Tip number two is that you really want to understand true market values. Keep in mind, most people look at controller.com when they're looking for a plane. That reflects only asking prices. There are no places that sales prices are published anywhere. Those are kept proprietary, usually by a confidentiality clause in the contract. So you may or may not know what similar planes are being sold for. The only way to really know those sales figures is by following the market carefully over time. We do address some of that information in our market reports that we publish quarterly on about 50 different models of aircraft. There are a lot of variables that go into a true value, like total time, damage history, and upcoming maintenance that can cause an aircraft to be worth more or less, even when you're comparing the same year models. Demand can shift a market pretty quickly. For instance, if 10 Citation Excels sell in a single quarter, the ones left on the market are suddenly more scarce, and scarcity raises prices. But ultimately, a plane's worth what a buyer will pay and what a seller will take for it. The third thing in choosing the right plane is that pedigree is more important than aesthetics. You can always change the paint and interior of the plane. You cannot change the maintenance history. If a plane has shoddy maintenance history, you may have problems. You may have problems now. You may have problems in the air. You may have problems when you try to resell the plane. 
It's also important to know how many owners that a plane's had and be able to look back and see that the title is clear. The third thing I would look at here is foreign history. For instance, look at the picture of this airplane right here with a palm tree. That's a lovely place to take a plane. But if you have your airplane based at a location with high humidity and high temperatures, a lot of times that can be a corrosive environment and that can cause early corrosion in the aircraft. So knowing where the aircraft's been maintained, under what aviation standards it's been maintained, and if everything's been done to have the aircraft in the country that you want to take it into, all of those things are important when you're looking at the foreign history of the plane. Again, the pedigree of the plane is more important than the nice seats or even the Wi-Fi that's already been installed. So moving on to building your team, my first tip here addresses the place where I see people spend thousands and thousands of dollars unnecessarily, and that's in making a bad choice on legal counsel. Pilots are not attorneys. Brokers are not attorneys. Attorneys get paid by the hour, but you may need to get some legal representation in some aspects of buying a plane. One thing that's really important is if the attorney has aviation experience. You definitely don't want them to be trying to figure out how to manage your deal on your dime. You want them to already know the questions that need to be asked and things that need to be addressed. Another thing you want to make sure is that your legal counsel has aviation tax knowledge. This can be very complex and it varies from state to state here in the U.S. You can spend a lot of money on taking care of taxes and arrears, or you can handle the planning for that at the front end, which is often a much better choice. The other thing that I would advise, and I did write a blog about this recently, is check the references of your attorney. Talk to a couple of people he or she has worked with and ask up front how much it will cost for the transaction. That's a great way to save money on your aircraft. Next, in building the right team, don't let technical people make financial decisions. Complex transactions require specialties. Technical people can look at all the different aspects of a plane and make sure that it's safe, but they can't necessarily make sound financial decisions as far as direct operating costs or annual budget or tax planning, so make sure you're getting the right advice from the right people. When in doubt, second opinions always help. Then, you know, we see this with a lot of aircraft owners who are not owner operators, that they end up with more avionics upgrades or other upgrades than they need because their advisor likes that particular upgrade or is getting a kickback for installing it. Next, this is a big deal. You need to know what to expect from a pre-purchase inspection and you need to have a good inspector or inspection facility. I put a mirror in here because of an early experience with an an inspection that we had. Our buyer, who was a Vietnam vet with a ton of aviation experience, showed up to look at three planes with a mirror and a flashlight. He ruled out two of the airplanes in 20 minutes just by looking at logbooks and putting his flashlight into the wheel well and peering into the mirror to see what was going on. After that, we did a full inspection on the third airplane, the one that met passed his initial test. And it is important to define discrepancies and who's going to pay for them in the purchase agreement. A lot of times we will put in the purchase agreement that the service center is going to determine whether a squawk is airworthy or not. And if someone has a discrepancy with the service center's discrepancy, we refer back to the maintenance manual. Anticipating upcoming maintenance is critical. I met someone a few years ago who when he bought his smaller citation, didn't realize that it had about $700,000 worth of maintenance coming due. And so he got into a million dollar plane for just under a million dollars. But then once he did all of the maintenance, he was way upside down in that plane. And I don't mean barrel rolls either. The next thing I'd say about pre-purchase inspections is that the logbook review might be the most important item in the purchase inspection. Obviously, you're going to look at the plane and make sure everything works. But if the logbooks are not in order, the plane is worth a lot less, like 50% less, depending on the extent of the missing data. This is especially true if the aircraft has been serviced outside of the country, as it will limit your ability to get an airworthiness certificate. 
Now we're moving on to how you save thousands by developing the right plan. My seventh tip today is that you need to do your tax planning before your purchase. We talked about this a little bit earlier, but it is so critical. You need to know the local tax laws. Is there a personal property tax? Is there a sales tax flyaway exemption that you want to take advantage of? Does that mean you're paying use tax instead when you bring it back to your local base? Here in Texas, it's really important to have your sale for resale certificate before you take delivery of the aircraft. So you're paying use tax on that aircraft instead of sales tax. Again, understanding the local laws covering that tax plan before you make a purchase is really important. You also need to understand reporting use of your aircraft accurately for accounting and tax purposes, especially if you let others use your plane. Next, you need to make sure you're doing business with someone really reputable in managing your aircraft. If you're having a pilot manage your plane, you need to talk with other people who've used that pilot in the past as well. Does that person have enough experience with the plane type or are they learning as they go? If it's a larger management company, do they submit to third party audits? Those can give peace of mind for sure. Lastly, you really need to count all the costs before you charter your plane to others. We hear a lot of people say, oh yeah, I'm gonna buy a plane and I'll charter it out and I'll recoup all my costs and I'll make money chartering the plane out. This is a great business. And that really just isn't the case. It will offset some of your fixed expenses. But then increased hours also mean more maintenance. Keep in mind that if other people are using your plane, they may not be as careful with the interior and the paint of your aircraft as you are. So you're going to have more wear, which means that you probably are going to be refurbishing sooner. Additionally, if you're chartering your plane, you need to clearly understand the terms of the management contract and what percentage you'll be receiving. I covered a lot of information here in a very short period of time. I feel like I barely scratched the tip of the iceberg because there are so many different things that can cost you money or where you can save money with your aircraft purchase and subsequent ownership. That's really why I came up with this concept called the Clear Skies course. I mentioned it a little bit earlier and I'm gonna talk about it now. I'm giving a disclaimer here um, I'm in a little bit of trouble because I showed it to the team in my office and they said, Renee, you are going to work us right out of a job because you're essentially teaching people how to be a great airplane broker. There is some truth to that. In the course, I take you through all the steps and let you know what to do to buy a plane effectively. In fact, we use this to start our training at Charlie Bravo. Don't forget, I promise to reveal the top five resources the smartest brokers use at the end of the webinar. You can look at that if you stick around to the end. What is the Clear Skies course? It is an online resource in a go at your own pace format so you can click in and out of lessons whenever you want. If you need to know about 1031 exchanges or Wi Fi upgrades today, it's at your fingertips. It's always available, you can log on anywhere. It's set up for responsive websites, so you can even watch it on your phone. When you enroll in the Clear Skies course, you will know what you didn't know before. You will definitely save money, much more than you invest in the program. You will have reliable resources at your fingertips, with more being released as members request them. And if you decide to use Charlie Bravo to acquire or sell an aircraft for you, you can apply the enrollment cost to the acquisition or listing fee. What does it look like? Inside the Clear Skies course, and I'll give you a quick tour in a minute, you're gonna see that we have six different modules and each one of those talks about a different aspect of the buying process. In each module, we have video lessons. There are a total of 28 lessons in the course and each module is subject-based and contains a varying number of lessons. Some of them, about half of them, are video presentations by me, and the other half are interviews with experts because, as I mentioned before, I've been doing this for a long time, but I still don't know everything about all the regulations and banking requirements 
and airworthiness directives. And besides, it's always interesting to get other people's perspective on things as well. Just so you can see kind of what this looks like, module one is about the aviation plan. We're gonna assess your mission. We're going to assess your budget with a pretty cool calculator. We're gonna talk about where your mission and budget meet. We're gonna talk about your aviation plan options, and that's all of the options up to and including buying an aircraft. I go through everything from fractional programs and jet cards to wheels up, jet smarter, and some regional programs in Texas, California, Colorado, and Europe. Plus, we're gonna go over what to watch for in charter if you're chartering an aircraft. As you can see in each lesson, there are video, audio, and transcript choices. If you're not a video learner, that should be pretty handy. And each lesson is noted with the playing time. By the way, this module, module one, is available for purchase separately for a limited time. And I'll talk about that a little bit later. In module two, we're gonna break down the costs and financing. So in this module, we'll estimate fixed annual cost and teach you how to calculate those along with your direct operating costs. We'll look at offsetting costs with charter. We'll talk about financing and leasing options. And then we'll talk about what goes into financing an aircraft. Some of these things have changed in recent years. So this is one area I definitely have expert input. In module three, we're gonna talk about making the right offer on the right plane. Obviously, we're gonna look at your aircraft selection, the pros and cons of buying new or pre-owned, and finally, we will review good offer parameters. I break down everything I put into an offer when I put one together for a client. I'm just gonna pause here for a second. I don't know who's putting together my videos, but my goodness, did they capture some funny expressions on my face, that's ridiculous. In module four, we take those terms even further and talk about creating and negotiating the purchase agreement. We discuss what to look for in the pre-purchase inspection with one of the best independent shops in the nation. We talk about choosing the right location for the pre-purchase inspection. And again, I talk about all the questions you should ask your attorney before you choose one. Module five is probably the most robust module. In this, we talk about legal structure for purchasing an aircraft. We talk about tax planning, and both of those are with an attorney I respect who has nearly 30 years of experience, both as an attorney and as a pilot. We talk about using a 1031 exchange for tax purposes, which really only pertains to Americans. We talk about aviation insurance. Then I do a deep dive on choosing your management company and how that might change if you're planning to allow charter on your aircraft. In module six, we talk about closing and successful aircraft ownership. We talk about what it means to use an aircraft uh, escrow agent for that process. We talk about upgrades to your aircraft and what that means for resale. We talk about others' use of your plane and how you can get in trouble with that. Then we talk about ongoing maintenance and how that impacts your resale value. Plus, inside the course, you'll have access to 50 quarterly market reports. We update those once a quarter based on world-class research. We have five different buyer's guides available for you, and each one of these has a two-page spread on each aircraft that's available. There are hundreds of jets and turboprops that we cover. We have one for light jets and one for mid-sized jets, one for large turboprops, and then one that is just dedicated to those that can be flown by a single pilot. Then we have a private aviation terms glossary with more than 500 terms that we use in private aviation. We have worked through for you a custom aircraft cost calculator report. All these things are worth well over $30,000 a year and they are available to you at any time in the resources tab of the course. Plus, we'll send you an email as we add more resources. If you're like me, you're ready to cut to the chase here. What's the investment in all this? 
money and time-saving data. It is $5,000 for the Clear Skies course. But here's the catch. I want to make sure I'm helping the people who buy now. So we are only accepting registrations for one week. After that, you'll have to wait until I offer the course again. Furthermore, I really like decisive people. I am one. So for today only, I'll take $10,000 off any acquisition you do with us any time this year instead of $5,000. That's only if you buy today. If you're buying piston aircraft and don't want to pay our minimum $50,000 acquisition fee, then as a thank you, I'll share my offer and purchase agreement templates for you for free if you sign up today. So what's it worth? Peace of mind. This program is amazing, and I think it would be worth the $5,000 if you only got a list of tax, legal, operations, and insurance questions to ask. I think it would be worth it if you only knew you explored all the options and selected the right plane for your mission. I think it would be worth it if you only got unbiased data on the plane market you're considering. I think it would be worth it if you only got referrals for best-in-class service providers for every step in the process. I think it would be worth it if you only got a basic education so you don't sound stupid in the boardroom or on the golf course. Enough about that. I love this quote. Jim Rohn, who died several years ago and was an entrepreneur in the U.S., said, if you really want to do something, you'll find a way. If you don't, you'll find an excuse. So here are the top three excuses I hear about not buying the course today. I'm not buying a plane right now. What if you delay? And then there's a once in a lifetime deal that comes across your desk. This is a limited time offer. And if you take it, you'll have the resources to make sure you don't lose money in that deal. Uh, plane ownership is probably not for me. You might be surprised if you count all the costs. Also, we do have the Clear Skies Course Lite version that you can purchase that's just that module one that talks about all of the options that are outside of full plane ownership. It gives you the same trip cost calculator and mission and budget assessment tools that you get as the full Clear Skies Course member. You may say, I already graduated. I'm not watching training videos. I hire people for that stuff. Well, buy your hired guns this course to make sure they don't miss any steps. There's nothing saying that just because you buy it doesn't mean you can't delegate to one of your employees to go through. Mm, I'm guilty of that. One of the reasons this whole course came about was when Kurt, my husband and business partner, was on the golf course. Big surprise to those of you who know him. During the round of 18 holes, someone in his foursome had all of these same objections. This particular man was using net jets for his private flight needs. By the end of the round, coming up 18, he was thinking about doing something different. We started talking. We calculated the cost differences between net jets and the Citation 10. And I'm gonna teach you how to do that in the course. We found the best Citation 10. We arranged for the pre-purchase inspection. We recommended financers. We supervised the pre-purchase inspection, overcoming issues as they arose. We knew the right questions to ask and the right person to trust to answer them. We got quotes from several management companies helping our client find the best fit. As we spoke on a daily basis, I noted all of the client's questions. The answers, along with more he didn't need, are all included in this Clear Skies course. In the course, all of that information is compacted down into short five to 10 minute video lessons that you can watch as a video, read the transcript, or listen to as an audio clip. So here's how to order, either the full course or the light version. Go to clearskiesclub.com, click the button, pay. You'll have immediate access to the course. If you have questions, you can enter them in the webinar question box to the right, or send me an email at renee at wepush10.com. There's the order page. Before we get to the questions, though, I did promise to reveal my top five resources as an aircraft broker. Here they are.
JetNet or AIMSTAT is my first one. We rely on this for all sorts of data about aircraft and their ownership. The next one is plane facts. My third resource is aircraft post. My fourth resource is VREF online. And my most important resource, and this is the resource that almost everyone uses, is each other. This is such a small industry. There's so much data. All of us rely on one another to present um, and perfect our data that we use in our daily work. So those are my five uh, top resources. So now I'm getting to questions. And again, you can email those to me um, at Renee at WePush10.com as well. So here's one question. Lewis asked, do you only deal in turbine aircraft like a Citation or do you help with something as small as a Bonanza or a T-182T? Well, Lewis, we typically charge about $50,000 as a minimum to acquire an aircraft. We're happy to acquire any kind of aircraft for you um, for that price, but that may be out of your budget, which is one of the reasons that I created this Clear Skies course. It was my desire to be able to give you resources in an online course. You weren't necessarily hiring a broker, but you had the resources at your fingertips to make sure that you were making all of the right decisions. And so within the Clear Skies course, you'll have a lot of the questions that you have answered. Um, and again, we're happy to help. And again, if you buy today, I'm happy to give you a temp templates for those uh, two documents that we use typically in our um, acquisitions processes as a broker. So I hope that answers your question. Um, someone else asked, can I upgrade to the full version if I buy the Clear Skies Lite version today? And that reminds me, I didn't go over the cost for the Clear Skies Lite version. I don't think it's $497. Um, so you can get started with Clear Skies and go through that first module for just a tenth of the price of the full course. Um, because, of course, there's a lot of value there, but then there's also value in all of the buying process. So, yes, you can upgrade at any time to the full version from the light version. So if you have questions and just want to start out on a smaller scale, buy the light version. Um, Okay, Keith asked the question, how long will I have access to the training? So, you know, technologies change and I, I don't know if we'll have this technology up forever, but I can guarantee that the site will be up for at least two years and you'll have access to all of those resources during that time. Um, you can download the buyer's guides and print those if you like. The market reports are updated once a quarter. So of course you're gonna have access to to a bunch of different quarterly market reports as we publish those. And then his follow-on question here is, what if the training doesn't answer my questions? Um, well, here we go. Questions? Email me at renee at wepush10.com. I'd be happy to help you. Thank you so much for attending the webinar today. Would love to get your feedback. If you uh, email me, I'd love to know what the best point was and how you think you're going to use this to save money. Thanks so much for attending today.